Yes, it's December, and since most of our hunting is but a memory, it's time to turn our thoughts to spring fishing. We met with the communications director for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission a few weeks ago to get an update on how they are handling the COVID situation and what we can expect as they prepare for the 2021 trout season. All that and more right now when we go out in the open. Out in the Open is brought to you by statewide abstract and national abstract companies. For 35 years, the Pocono choice when you need a real estate title research company. By Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms. By B&B Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Honesdale, a family-owned and operated new and pre-owned car and truck dealership trusted for the best price and service since 1970. By the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice of personal carry, and the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you will find the largest retail showroom in the Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. And by Spall, Rizuski, Anderson, Lolly, and Tunis, Pocono lawyers with experience in estate planning, personal injury, litigation, social security and disability, family law, and all real estate matters. Hey folks, welcome to this edition of Out in the Open. I'm Alex Zedock. And I'm Joanne Zedock. We've got a terrific show for you today. We're talking fish commission. We're on the shores, actually, on the bank of the Susquehanna River down here in Harrisburg. And uh, we came down here because I won an award uh, that the Fish Commission sponsors in the Pennsylvania Outdoor Writers Association. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, artwork. So they came down, I came down to, to pick it up, and, uh, and we figured while we're here, let's talk to someone from the Fish Commission and get some inside information about what's going on with the COVID thing and everything else. Exactly, and we learned so much. You know, I always say I want you to learn something. We learned so much, and I, some of, I thought the thing that was really interesting is about helping with the stocking, because we like to do that. Absolutely. And now they do it. Yeah, well, <laughs> but maybe uh, the springtime, as you'll see, you know, we talk right. a little bit about that too, yeah. but we are down here along the Susquehanna. There are a lot of people putting boats in and a lot of people fishing. Yes. Uh, we're, we're late fall. We're, we're, it's mm -hmm. chilly out here and, uh, are you chilly? No, <laughs> no, you're no freezing. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're down here in Harrisburg. It's a little bit warmer than it is up in the Poconos, but, yes. um, we came down, we figured you'd like to uh, get some insight into the Fish Commission and what's going on. And it, it all worked out well. So, uh, yeah. we're headed from here to Bass Pro. <laughs> Let's go. Go to Bass Pro Shop okay. and uh, do a little shopping. How about that? I, oh, we're going to come. We're going to come. Get a little I'm lunch. Do we'll do something. <laughs> hey, folks, don't go away. we got a great show for you. We'll be right back. It's been years in the making. Tim Flanagan's landmark Upland hunting masterpiece is finally here. This new coffee table style edition, The Birds of My Life, Grouse and Woodcock, is a lifetime of extraordinary hunting experience vividly brought to life by Wild River Press. At 11 by 8.5 inches with 413 all-color pages, it contains rare photographs of grouse and woodcock, the result of spending thousands of hours in the field. This is the Upland Game Book to have and to give. Order your copy today directly from wildriverpress.com. Hi everyone, my name is Mike Parker. I'm the Communications Director for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Communications Director is sort of like press secretary or spokesperson. Every state agency has one or several, so it's my job to be a spokesperson for all things dealing with fishing and boating and all the business of the Fish and Boat Commission across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, thank you, uh, Alex, for having me here on, 
on the show this week. It's a real honor. I know you guys have been doing this show for a long time, so I appreciate the opportunity to talk about some of the things that we're doing at the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. We're here today along the beautiful Susquehanna River just outside of the city of Harrisburg at the Fish and Boat Commission's Fort Hunter boat access area. This is one of about 300 boat access areas that we have located across the state. This is the easiest place to be able to park uh, your car uh, in your trailer and get yourself out on the water and return safely here uh, and hopefully with a creel full of fish and some great memories. So the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission is a government agency here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, although it's not an agency like the Department of Health or the Department of Education in that it's not an agency that's directly underneath the leadership of the governor. Uh, what we are is a commission. So as a commission, we're made up of uh, 10 commissioners, which are appointed by the governor, who would be sitting at the time. So uh, commissioners, uh, their, their uh, terms are currently four years, although dating back, commissioners can be uh, elected, or excuse me, appointed to serve their district for uh, perpetuity. Um, at the moment, the majority of our commissioners have been seated under Governor Tom Wolf. So we have 10 commissioners, uh, six, or excuse me, eight of those commissioners uh, represent districts across the state, districts one through eight, one being Erie, uh, eight being uh, the, the southeastern corner, of the Philadelphia area, and move, sort of moving across uh, and, and across the bottom of the state. And then we also have two other commissioners which are boating at large commissioners. So those commissioners represent the constituents here in Pennsylvania strictly to deal with boating issues. Um, the commissioners, they hire an executive director. Our, our executive director is currently uh, Tim Schaefer. Tim's been with the commission for about a year and a half or two years now, just about the same length of time that, that I've been with the Fish and Boat Commission. And uh, the executive director then is in charge of all of the various bureaus from our hatcheries, daily operations from our fisheries staff, biologists, to our education staff across the state, teaching people how to fish and boat and various education programs that we hold at different Fish and Boat Commission properties, state parks, and in partnership with some of our, our private partners, uh, such as Trout Unlimited or other sportsmen's groups across the state. Uh, marketing, communications, all of those things and, and things like the Bureau of Administration, which deals with uh, the sale of fishing licenses and, and boat registrations. All of those daily operations fall under the leadership of the executive director. Of course, all of those things kind of sounds like office talk. And really the face of the Fish and Boat Commission for many people in their communities are our, uh, it is our staff of waterways conservation officers, or WCOs. We have roughly 100 WCOs across the state of Pennsylvania, which seems like a large number, but for a state this size with 67 counties, that's just a little over one officer per county. So the chances of actually encountering a Fish and Boat Commission uh, waterways conservation officer while you're out and about can be pretty slim, although they do their very best, uh, very best uh, to, to get out there, be on the water, patrol, and enforce the Fish and Boat Code of Pennsylvania. Well, the impact of COVID-19 on the Fish and Boat Commission has, has been just, just like everyone else. It's, there's been a great impact. Um, if, when you think about it, the, the last day that myself and many other employees of the commission worked from our offices at our headquarters in Harrisburg or State College or wherever else we have offices was around the middle of March. So March 17th, let's say, was the day that you know, the state said, you're now working from home. Well, when you look at March 17th on the calendar as it relates to fishing here in Pennsylvania, that's sort of right in the thick of things. We start stocking trout right around March 1st. So we were stocking trout uh, ahead of the spring trout season for about two weeks when, when COVID-19 hit. So everything was just about normal. We had large groups of volunteers joining us and helping us to stock 3.2 million adult trout in just about a thousand waterways all across Pennsylvania, so it's, it's no small task. And then all of a sudden to be told, we have to socially distance, we can't have large groups and gatherings. Well, now that hinders our ability to use volunteers to get those trout out into the water. So what we ended up doing was basically having an all hands on deck approach when it came to our agency. Uh, people who would normally be answering phones that now couldn't be in the office to answer those phones um, or filling boat registration applications, things like that, were now joining us in the field as staff that we could control as a smaller group 
as opposed to outside volunteers. We were doing all of that, uh, you know, large undertaking of stocking trout across the state simply as an agency. So that, that in, on its own was, uh, was something that, that was a major impact to us. We certainly wish that we could have all those groups of volunteers to help us put the fish in the water, spread the fish out, participate in things like float stocking. But really what it ended up doing was bringing our agency closer together, giving some people who don't get a lot of time out in the field a better appreciation of what we do, of what our waterways officers do, what our hatchery staff does, and how much the public appreciates it. And we always say that the more people that get out on the water and see the water, it's actually, it's much better for the resource. It gives people an appreciation. They're less likely to litter. They're more likely to uh, take pride in what they see out there and appreciate you know, 86,000 miles of water that we have to offer here in Pennsylvania. From a staff standpoint, it just changed the, the way that we did things, along with having to reallocate staff from different areas in order to accomplish that large task of stocking 3.2 million trout. We also had to worry about protecting ourselves, our staff and the public. So we instituted very early on masking requirements, uh, wearing gloves, separating ourselves. So if someone's going to, instead of handing a bucket of fish down from the truck, putting the bucket down on the truck, someone else comes over and grabs the bucket of fish and then walks down to the creek. Things like that. Uh, very early on being just extra cautious to make sure that our staff was safe. When you think about it, uh, just losing one or two staff members on a, on a stocking crew from a hatchery could, could impact dozens uh, of waterways from being stocked. You know, the folks who drive our, our large stocking trucks, these are CDL operator, operator driver, you know, have a CDL driver's license. And so, you know, that's, that's special training that not everyone has to operate those big white trucks that carry the trout across the state. So we want to make sure that our staff remained healthy, um, wasn't getting sick, because if we lost just one of them, that could mean that we didn't have anyone to deliver trout to your area, to your neck of the woods. And so through all those extra precautions, we were able to make things happen. Um, probably the one, maybe the most controversial a uh, thing that we did a as an agency that folks noticed around trout season uh, was that we moved the dates around. You know, certainly everyone was used to having the regional opening day at the end of March and uh, the mentored youth days and then having a statewide opener uh, two weeks later, you know, and sort of mid-April. Well, when it, we, we started getting different mandates from the Department of Health, from the governor's office and working with them and determining how we could safely have a trout season, which typically includes lots of people either traveling to a camp to get together or lining up, just getting ready around, around a lake, you know, shoulder to shoulder, getting ready to fish all at once at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. We realized pretty early that that was gonna be sort of unrealistic and, and not in line with the COVID-19 guidelines. So what we did is we, we sort of sprung it on everyone. It wasn't the most popular decision, but it was April 7th, uh, I believe April 7th, maybe April 8th, um, how time has flied since last year. But we had formed a plan to have a soft opening, you know, uh, a surprise opening. Surprise, it's trout season. And that way, what we, were, what we were hoping to accomplish was encouraging people to, hey, the trout are ready to be caught. If you have your license, head out to your local waterway, catch some trout, take them home, have a great time, but discourage people from planning too far ahead in those large gatherings, heading up to camp, maybe leaving the Philadelphia area or that five county, you know, southeastern corner where there was a lot of COVID cases and, and possibly taking that virus with them to another part of the state to be with family and friends. We encourage people to stay close to home, fish where they could, there were, were trout in the water, and uh, in the end, it turned out to be a, a pretty successful move. Um, certainly, there were folks who were disappointed that we sort of messed up their tradition for the year. But when you looked around and there were people who were unable to go to church, people who were unable to go to school, uh, the idea that trout season was just going to stay the same, when you really looked at it, uh, you, you could see that something did have to change. And so we adjusted our plan.
Real estate law is our business. I need an abstract title search company near Stroudsburg, Mount Pocono, Pocono Lake, Lake Naomi, Blake Slee. Call National Abstract at 570-646-4110. For offices near Scranton, Clark Summit, Lake Wallen Pompac, Lords Valley. And for general information, call 570-226-6229. For 35 years helping people with real estate, we're a Pocono experience you can't afford. Call 570-226-6229. Buck Hill Firearms, home of the $10 transfer. Located at 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania. You never have to make an appointment. We're open 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Buck Hill Firearms is a full-service gun shop with on-site gunsmithing. Buck Hill Firearms NRA certified instructors are here to help you choose a gun that's right for you. Buck Hill Firearms, 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania. Right next to the Mountain Home Diner. Check out the website at buckhillfirearms.com. Ever wonder why good old St. Nick puts more Ram trucks under the trees in the Northeast? Because he gets the best deals at B&B, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Honesdale. Santa even runs a Ram himself because he knows the tough terrain in the Northeast needs the toughest truck in the region. For nearly 50 years, B&B has provided the best ride in the region with Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. Not only the best financing options and service, but a huge selection of new and used inventory. Be a Santa, stop by or shop the web at bmb.com ho 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 to translate a vision into reality is true innovation at car arms we not only manufacture some of the most advanced firearms on the market we build assurance and reliability through a solid history of quality we pride ourselves on offering concealable, performance-driven firearm systems that exceed expectations time and time again. Car Arms, American ingenuity at its finest. Hi, I'm attorney Jack Squall. My roots are deeply planted here in the lake region of the Poconos. I wish you the best that the holiday season has to offer, and my partners agree. A very common question we get from the public is, how does the hatchery system work? Why does one area, why does one body of water get a certain amount of trout or a certain type of trout while another part of the state or you know another body of water in a different location gets a different number of fish or a different type of fish and really there are, there are a number of ways that that occurs and the, the number one answer that I can, can tell you that we always start things off is, is it's not a political process there's there's no determination of this area of the state is going to get more fish because um, you know, uh, your representative did a better job of asking for fish up there. We, we do everything based on the popularity of the water, uh, its ability to hold fish, angler pressure, meaning how many people actually fish, again, going back to the popularity, and a lot of that also has to do with access. So is it a highly accessible area that you're able to fish in? Places that are not very easy to access, that are difficult to get to, that don't receive a lot of angling pressure, typically receive less fish. The popular waterways that are, again, open to the public, um, the, the larger, uh, some of the, the lakes, state parks are a great example. Many state park lakes receive a great allocation of trout around the trout season because a lot of people gather there and it's very easy to fish. So we put the fish where the people are. Um, you know, the agency is funded not by any general tax dollars, but only by the sale of fishing licenses. Um, when it comes to you know the trout season, uh, it's uh, the, the number of trout that we that we put in the water. Uh, those those dollars that we get from your trout permit go back into our hatchery system to raise trout. And so, you know, those are the those are really the that's the formula that we use when it comes to the species of, of what kind of fish go in the water. Certainly, we have areas. You know, we have we have different species of trout that we're raising. It's important to note that we have 14 state fish hatcheries across the state, and eight of them almost exclusively raise trout. So that 3.2 million trout are raised at about eight different hatcheries. 
And we also cooperate with what we call cooperative nurseries, sportsmen's groups, schools, other groups that raise trout that we provide very small fingerling trout and they'll raise another about a million trout for us that, that go out. So across the state, what we end up with in, uh, mainly in the spring, but also um, some limited fall stockings is about, is about 4.2 million trout across the state. You know, there are great places to catch wild trout in Pennsylvania. And for the vast majority of those locations, we don't stock any trout. And there's a self-sustaining population. And you, you can catch trout in those locations just like you can, uh, you know, catch stock trout with the same seasons and creel limits. Unless, of course, they're um, managed under a miscellaneous special regulation, which basically means it might have a smaller daily creel limit, or it might be a catch and release or a delayed harvest situation where we don't allow harvest uh, at the same time that we would allow harvest in a stocked trout stream. So in those cold water streams, uh, you know, in, in areas, uh, mountainous areas, um, in many of the lakes, we'll stock some brook trout uh, the, the, the most popular uh, trout that we have, to, is, 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 the, the anglers say it presents the, the best catch, is the rainbow trout. So it's the, most, it's the most prevalent fish that we stock in trout stocked waters. And then we'll also, of course, stock the beautiful brown trout. And then we have a limited number of the golden rainbow trout, uh, which people have called palomino trout over the years, but it is a uh, species of rainbow trout called a golden rainbow trout, very popular. When we do stock trout, we want anglers to understand that the intention is not to stock trout somewhere to establish a new population of trout. It is a put and take opportunity. And in many of the places, in the majority of places that we stock trout, there isn't a native population of trout. And trout wouldn't typically survive year round in those streams because quite simply after around June or July, the water gets too warm for trout, which are a cold water species to survive. So when you're buying your trout permit and your fishing license, you're paying for us to provide a, an enhanced opportunity for you to catch trout. And so we're, we're putting them in streams and lakes all across the state, and we want you to catch those fish. Catch them this year, have a great time, buy the license, support the program, and we'll put more in again next year for the same opportunity. As we come into the new year, there are some exciting things happening. There's also some you know, uncertainty that remains as, as far as how we'll be able to operate as we head into spring, um, you know, given the, uh, the pandemic and the certain restrictions that we still have, have on us for group gatherings and things. So while currently we have a uh, schedule of, of opening days regionally and statewide, including those mentored youth days, we do want everybody, it's very important, just as it's important in other aspects of our lives, from school to church to our jobs, to make sure that we're keeping up to date. Don't just look at a date one time right now on you know, January 1st and say that's gonna be the date that we stick with. Because I think if there's one thing we've learned over the past you know, year is that things are constantly changing uh, given the you know, ongoing public health risk that, that's out there. So I would remind folks that, you know, if you want to get an early jump and purchase that uh, 2021 fishing license, those went on sale on December 1st, and you can continue to buy those uh, in, you know, they're good through December uh, 30th of, of 2021. So it's a, it's a great value if you buy it early. Um, you can purchase it online at fishandboat.com. It's very easy to do so. You can buy a single year license. You can buy a multi-year, three, five, or 10 year license. There are options for seniors uh, to save a little bit of money as well. So it's, it's a great time to start thinking about getting the most bang for your buck. You know, we've, we, we had a mild winter last year and a lot of people fished in January and February and March. Whereas a lot of folks don't purchase their license until April. Well, if you think you might want to get, get out once or twice uh, over the winter or, you know, very early spring, it's, it's a, it's, the license is available and it's a great way to maximize the value. We also hope, you know, that we're, we're making a lot of decisions right now regarding how we're going to be handling the stocking of trout when it comes to spring. And those decisions will be, will be moving forward and we, we look forward to making those announcements so, so everybody knows and we're all on the same page. I wish I had more to tell you right now, but what I can tell you you know, for certain is that we, we hope that we can once again welcome all of those volunteers to get out there and safely help us distribute these trout. You know, not enough can be said about how 
not only is it good for the angler to, to spread those, those trout out early in the spring through methods like float stocking, but it's also good for the soul, good for you know, camaraderie, good for people to take ownership of the local creek and their local you know, body of water by actually getting out there ahead of time, getting excited. I, I look at trout stocking and participating in trout stocking almost the same way that people get excited prior to the deer season when they see a big buck on their trail camera. If you see those big trout going into the water a couple of weeks before the trout season opens up, you're more likely to get excited, take a kid out there, have fun, and, and hope that you might be on the receiving end or you, know, you might actually catch one of those, those big trophy-sized trout. Once again this year, um, as we started last year, but kind of got lost in the shuffle with the you know all the all the covid issues that we've been dealing with was that we did we we nearly we we doubled the size of uh or the number of trophy sized trout that we've been, been putting in water across the state we also increased the number of golden rainbow trout by about 40 percent so it's a better chance than it's ever been for you to get out there and hook up with one of these big beautiful fish that we're raising in our hatcheries and in the meantime I mean, we're talking a lot about trout but if trout fishing isn't your thing I encourage you to head on out, find a beautiful spot, world-class smallmouth bass fishing here on the Susquehanna River. And, you know, that's an opportunity that's available just about year-round. So um, enjoy the weather while we have it here in, uh, you know, we're standing here in late fall. As I'm speaking to you, it's, uh, you know, the, the turn of the new year. Hopefully we have some good weather and uh, you're spending your time gearing up and getting excited for spring. For more information about the Fish and Boat Commission, you can visit our website, fishandboat.com, or check out the Fish Boat PA mobile app. It's totally free for your smartphone. And we like to say that it's the most valuable piece of equipment that you can keep in your tackle box. So thank you for having me here on the show, and we'll see you out on the water. Out in the Open is brought to you by statewide abstract and national abstract companies. For 35 years, the Pocono choice when you need a real estate title research company. By Buck Hill Firearms and Mountain Home, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms. By B&B Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Honesdale, a family-owned and operated new and pre-owned car and truck dealership trusted for the best price and service since 1970. By the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice of personal carry, and the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you will find the largest retail showroom in the Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. And by Spall, Rizuski, Anderson, Lolly, and Tunis, Pocono lawyers with experience in estate planning, personal injury, litigation, social security and disability, family law, and all real estate matters. Hey folks, we hope you enjoyed the show. We enjoyed bringing it to you, certainly, and the entire year's show. Wow, so many wonderful things. Absolutely. Another year's gone by, and next year we're looking to start our 23rd year on BRC 13. And uh, we hope you'll join us, because we've got a lot coming. So, you know, from our house to yours, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And, you know, we're going to be somewhere doing our shows into the next year out in the open. Absolutely. Happy New Year.